of the things I heard from you is you care a lot about family, you care a lot about legacy, and you care a lot about preserving the future and what that looks like in yeah. being a visionary. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what your leadership kind of helps with those things. What so, is your leadership style and how are you going to use that to propel Belfouche forward and to implement your plans for the future? So being in, in um, business with my dad, we went, when I started with him, I think we had eight employees and now we're between 25 and 30. Wow. Um, and, and we write 70 W2s a year. So we do have some high turnover, especially in Rapid City at, at some of our frontline positions. But if you look at our managers and some of our deeper positions, there's long time employees, uh, that we've had, um, I mean, been great employees and they've been fun to work with. And so my leadership style is one of communication and ministry, I would say, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, coupled with vision and in inside of that, right. So vision without communication is empty. Mm -hmm. My leadership style inside the company is one where I want to empower my employees to do, to make the decisions, Mm -hmm. right. My man, my main manager, um, she (laughs) will get mad at me because she'll be like, well, what do do you want to do about this situation? I'd be like, hmm, I don't know. I'll talk to the manager. What do you want to do about the situation? <laughs> well, I knew you would say that is what she would say. And it's yeah. like, well, you're closer to it than I am. Tell me your solution, yeah. right? Tell me what you want to do. Okay, that sounds good. Let's go. Yeah, right? I trust you. I trust you and I'm empowering yeah. you in your position. And I've trusted you yeah. to, yeah. And I know if you're stuck, you'll call me and be like, should I go left or right? I think you should go right, mm-hmm. you know? Like, or I wouldn't have handled it that way. I think I would have handled it this way in the future, mm-hmm. you know, but that's okay. We'll, we'll yeah. make that adjustment in the future. I'm happy you made a decision. Yep. One of the biggest principles I, I adhere to is what is said is never what is heard. Right. Right. And so, I mean, that happens all the time. I'll say something and then it's like, what did you hear me say? I heard you say this. No, that's not what I was trying to say. And part of that is me being, I need to grow as a communicator. Right. And part of that is just natural hu- human, human nature. tendencies, yep. human mm-hmm. natures. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I always feel, though, that I can always keep improving on how I communicate mm-hmm. so that I can communicate to a myriad of people mm-hmm. and still be effective because mm-hmm. it does me no good to lead somebody if I can't communicate with them. Correct. And yeah. that's where the, it all starts, right? There should be no knee-jerk reactions. There should be no yelling. There should be no frustration at that level, mm-hmm. right? If you're communicating and there's trust there, there's no problems, mm-hmm. right? Okay, this is the problem. What's the solution? But you make that solution based upon the overarching vision, Mm -hmm. right? So if this is where we're trying to go, this decision comes up. Well, how does that get us there? Yeah. Because if it doesn't get us there, then that's the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. When you have that end goal in mind of this is the type of community we want to be, okay, we want good roads. We want good water. We want plenty of water. We want Mm -hmm. access to things. We want a thriving downtown. Mm -hmm. We want the the people to be able to afford their homes here, Mm -hmm. okay? We want a nice facility or a nice community for family Mm -hmm. parks that they can go to things that they can do like this is where people want to raise a family that's what Mm -hmm. i want Mm -hmm. i want to raise my family Mm -hmm. here i want that route here um and and when we do that if that's our goal then how Mm -hmm. does this decision that is in front of us Mm -hmm. how does that align with that right right if you're not knowing where you're going it makes every decision very difficult Mm -hmm. and elongated in taking Mm -hmm. yeah because it's like, well, if we do this, and it could be this, 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 and this. Well, you know, it always comes back to that. I think like most meetings are run very poorly. Now, there's a difference between like a meeting, like at a committee level. Mm-hmm. They're structured in a way that they have to be run that way. But they're, the, the, the internal meetings, right? Right? Don't come to me and present all, me all these different avenues of where you're trying. Like, okay, we, we could, like, what do you, what do you hope to accomplish? What do you want me to agree with at the end of this? Just right. come in and tell me that. Yeah. Okay. Come out and tell me. Okay. Like we, we have a bonus structure payment in our, in our, in our company. And, um, Becky came to me, my main manager. She's like, you know, according to our policy on our bonus, these two employees would not get it. Okay. But I would like them to get it because I feel that they've earned it back because they stepped up here, they stepped up there and all these other things. And it's like, well, I go, if I say no to them giving the bonus, are you going to fight me on this? She goes, yeah. I go, then why didn't you just say that? (laughs) <laughs> okay why don't yeah. you just come into the meeting and tell me okay i would like to give them these bonuses even though the letter of the law says they shouldn't get it mm-hmm. but i feel that they should because of xyz okay that sounds good to me that seems fair good to go where do you think belfouche currently is and where would you like to see it where would you describe the ideal community or ideal belfouche in the future um the ideal belfouche of the future i feel is just a very beautiful community that people when they pass through here would stop just based upon how beautiful it looks and view it as just a, a great place to be, right? Mm-hmm. That they felt safe, 
that they felt welcomed, that they, the attitude was great, that it's, that it's the Midwestern, you know, country feel and yet, you know, but there was things to do. There was things to see. Right. And that, and, and, and just treated with respect in that way. Right. And, and part of that starts with where I think that we're at now. I think that the people are that way, but I don't think that we as a city reflect that very well. Mm-hmm. Okay. In the mirror, I feel that in our hearts as people, mm-hmm. that most of us are that way. We're very kind. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're, we can be very generous. Mm-hmm. We're very supportive in a lot of ways. You know, I have a, a cousin that um, lives in Sioux Falls and he's a runner. And he said, this is one of the better walking paths I've ever ran on. It's mm-hmm. well lit for most of it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty well defined. There's a little bit of a section that's kind of not well defined, but he likes running here. Yeah. Are we emphasizing the things we do well? Are we emphasizing the strengths? I feel that we have these isolated strengths mm-hmm. inside of the city that are not being united. Mm-hmm. There's committees that the mayor appoints people to that have four council members. Okay. Like your public works, your legal finance, your police, your rec center. Okay. Now they can't take action there because there's just but they're just four. Okay. So there's no majority. Now I can't attend a meeting like that, that I'm not on Mm -hmm. because that creates a quorum, but I can attend economic development because they just have a liaison. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's just one council member that goes there. So you can have up to three more council members just show up to stay informed. I have tried to make a majority of economic developments meetings. I've tried to make uh, the chambers meetings. I'm, they're difficult to make sometimes, and so I haven't made them all, but I do try to show up to those. I've made only a, a few combo meetings, you know, and I used to be the liaison for the roundup committee, and I've been a part of that. And those are kind of the main committees. You still have the museum, and you have the library. Those are boards as well. Uh, I've tried to stay invested in those because I am a business owner, right? And so I want to see them grow. I want to see them succeed. And I want them to know what the community feels about them as a liaison from the people. Mm-hmm. Like this is the perception of you. It might not be true, but you should be aware of it. And yeah. we should work on unifying those visions. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is the same for the city and, and in these boards. Don't we want the reflection of us to be true and accurate? Mm-hmm. Right? And where our heart is and what we do. I mean, I would imagine that the city employees want the citizens to know how hard they work for the city. Mm-hmm. And that to be an accurate reflection of their work ethic and their values, mm-hmm. right? And this comes down to communication on these issues. And, and how do we, and I think the mayor plays a very pivotal role in unifying the city into a, a vision and into a cohesive unit. We look at, uh, John Newby came to town early on in my tenure and he talked about being truly local. And that died mm-hmm. from a lack of follow through, I feel, through a lack of just just commitment and a lack of unity. And I feel that, the mayor can play an important role in keeping that alive. Mm -hmm. Like I think it would be just outstanding, right? If you had the first Saturday in every month be Belfouche Saturdays. Okay. In every event, like you could streamline the efficiency of the city. Okay. Cause if the city employees only have to shut down main street and these other streets and put out benches and porta potties and electrical Mm -hmm. and all these things one day a month, instead of here, there, here, there, mm-hmm. here, there. It's going to make us more efficient. We're going to be able to fix more streets. We're going to be able to do more of the maintenance work because we're not doing that work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if the city is willing to support this, and I feel that the city should, we should take care of the trafficking. We should pay for that. We mm-hmm. should pay for these things to be down. We should facilitate for what we can because we have, we have traffic cones and we have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. So let's do this to where then you aren't getting all the business owners downtown upset about you know, maybe the main streets shut down this day or that day. They can plan on it. Mm-hmm. This Saturday, it's going to be shut down. If you want to run a crazy days, run a crazy days. If you want to run a cornhole tournament, run it. If you want to do an all car rally in the park, if you want to do a three man, three team, three person basketball team tournament up at the rec center, do it that weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, do a, a music down at the museum. Do you could make it just a very you know farmers market. You could do all kinds of things, mm-hmm. right? That is a Saturday to be in Belfouche. You're going to draw people here, mm-hmm. you know, cause I know for myself, I get caught. Well, I can't go every weekend to something in Belfouche. So you end up with 100, 200 people, right? You know, tops. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, if you have one Saturday a month where you're creating that buzz and that feel, think of the vendors you're going to get. Think of the food trucks you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Think of how you're facilitating business growth mm-hmm. inside of the city for that one day. Right. It makes it just, I think it could be just a great thing. And I don't know, that was, that's not my idea. That's John Newby. That's what they do in his hometown. Mm -hmm. And they get an influx of thousands of people for that one day a month. It's an epicenter. It's it's an epicenter. Mm -hmm. It's just people want to be here. There's so many things to do. I will be going out with, with a business card with access to my website. And when my, and in my website, there's going to be a poll of things that you feel you would like to see done in the city. 
what do you think would help facilitate the health of the city? Mm -hmm. Or what do you think would help facilitate the health of businesses? And I want to go to business and say, what do you think would make it healthier for you? Mm -hmm. How can the city help you be more successful mm -hmm. in Belfouche? Wouldn't that be a great attitude from the city to have? Oh, yeah. Right? How can we help you? How mm -hmm. can we make you more successful? Mm -hmm. Okay? And then they can go on there and, and, and put in this poll... Okay, what they feel would do that, ideas. Mm -hmm. And if I'm elected, I would like to use that as a working list, mm -hmm. right? This is what, because then it gives me evidence, right? I can say to people, this is what 45 people, you know, out of whatever, they said this was the biggest issue, mm -hmm. right? You can't say that it's not when you have evidence that it is. Mm -hmm. And then you start working down that list of things. I was talking to a, a business owner and his employee said, you know, what about who takes care of, like the graffiti under the bridges. When we have these walk, we have this walking path and it goes under the bridges. Now, full discretion. I'm an anti walker. I think <laughs> you only have so many steps in your life and why waste them? So I don't go on the walking path. I've gone occasionally with my family. My wife is a runner. She takes the kids there all the time and all this stuff. But uh, so opposites full attract. Opposites okay? attract. All right. Uh, different philosophies of life. There. Um, now she is skinny and I'm a little overweight, so there could be an issue there too. So inside of that, um, this person though said like she likes to walk and she's just like, it'd be really great if we had artwork underneath the bridges to cover up that stuff. I said, that's a great idea. I go, I was just thinking of that too, because I was getting my pictures taken behind city hall and I saw the, the, the concrete dike behind my own business mm -hmm. and, and the business next to us. And it's like, I never see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, that would, cause Vern Bills had, when I was working for him, like 14 or 15, he had that mural painted on the side of his building. Yep. And it was done, by, I think, by the art class in the high school. High school, it was, you know, yep. it was. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful, I mean, it's just, that kind of stuff would be so attractive, mm -hmm. right? So you come through Belfouche and you start seeing artwork mm -hmm. on different things mm -hmm. and to help facilitate that, I think that'd really beautify the city. Mm -hmm. Plus, it frees up the Public Works Department from having to clean up graffiti. Mm -hmm. I mean, what if we did a thing like Rapid City where they have... Art Alley. Art Alley. Mm -hmm. But it's Art Bridges. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, that's a great idea. And you, could, you can paint underneath the bridges and you can do these things and we encourage you to do that. Mm -hmm. because And then you, every time you go through there, it's not the same thing. It's ever changing. Right? So when it creates a different a different environment every time you go through. I mean, that could be just an awesome attraction. Mm -hmm. right? Start promoting the center of the nation more. Yeah. We are not promoted as a center of the nation very mm -hmm. well. No. We don't advertise that very well. I think that that needs to be a, a main point because people will come here purely because of that. Right? Mm -hmm. I love building things. Yeah. Like I love building the business with my dad, like to overcome the challenges and find solutions. I am a solution finder. Just how do we do that as a group? And mm -hmm. how do we do that? At, you know, as city employees, mm -hmm. as directors or heads of department, you know, in all these other w ways and, and just really promote what we do well in a mm -hmm. healthy way mm -hmm. and state of the art parks. I mean, they're doing some really cool things these days with parks that, mm -hmm. that are really just awesome and great to do. And handicap um, accessible for, for yes, kiddos. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and there's grants and stuff out there to do these things. And, mm -hmm. and like we should, and we are mm -hmm. right. Like the, the new park going in down at the round of grounds, that was, I think, um, 75 or a hundred thousand of that was a grant, mm -hmm. you know, and that's important. You know, we got new lights down at the ballpark. Um, I think that's a great improvement. You could push over the old lights. That was terrible yeah. um but there's there's ways that we can do better things mm -hmm. and i just think that we need to really emphasize that mm -hmm. strike on that and then just create this culture of unity and business health because if you have healthy businesses I, the people want to be here well businesses are the pulse of a of a, of a town very yes mm -hmm. but yeah. the, but the city can be an engine that drives people into businesses to encourage that yeah. mentality yeah, so absolutely. you had, you touched on the functions of uh, the council, the city council. Can mm -hmm. you talk to us about the function of the mayor and how you're going to utilize that to propel Belfouche forward? So the roles should be very different. In, in council, like to actually complain to council about an ordinance um, not being followed, okay? It, to, to, that, it's the wrong place because the council doesn't have oversight over the employees. The mm -hmm. council is the only hiring and firing authority for the city. Okay, and that means that they do have the final say in hiring and firing, but they are strictly commanded not to get involved with employees, right? Like you don't get into the day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. That is the mayor's job. Mm -hmm. So when ordinances aren't being followed or enforced or there's a complaint on that, that goes to the mayor. And the mayor is the one who enforces that because he has the direct authority over the employees. Right. If right. you want another ordinance made, you go to council. You want a resolution made, you go to council. Okay. You have a complaint about one of those not being met or followed. 
you go to the mayor because he's the one who actually has that oversight, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, in the council, if they're getting complaints, they should apply pressure to the mayor to address that, right? And at mm -hmm. least get back and answer, right. you know, and that's in that stuff. And, and that's very important. And I feel that that, um, I don't know how well that's been done over the last decade, mm -hmm. right? In, inside of this city. When I ran for council, I ran because I felt the Lord asking me to run. Mm -hmm. Okay. I kind of looked at Trump and Biden and said, this is the best we have <laughs> to offer. To yeah. Offer. Like how, how did, how did nobody stop any, any one of these before they got to this Where point, they're at, yeah. you know, like on the local level. Mm -hmm. And it's because good people are, are busy and they are their family people. And it's, and it's, it's a sacrifice to be in politics, mm -hmm. in government, as my dad would say, not politics. I'm not a politician. I'm way too honest to be that. I can't stand <laughs> politics. I just, just tell me how it is and I'll tell you how it is. And let's mm -hmm. just operate from that space. Cause mm -hmm. then we can both operate from trust. If you look at the way I have functioned as a council person, mm -hmm. I have always, in my opinion, stood behind what I have said, mm -hmm. what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. even if I'm a losing vote, even if you disagree with me, you knew where I stood and you knew why I stood there. Mm -hmm. You might not agree with why I stood there and I respect that. And I hope you can respect me for that. But you knew where I stood and I didn't waver in that. Mm -hmm. I had a constituent call me and present to me an argument. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then I explained that in council. Mm -hmm. I voted this way in committee, but I changed that vote because XYZ. X, y, Z. I need to be able to go to bed at night knowing that I can defend the vote I made. Mm -hmm. And that is always the way I made it. You might disagree with some of my philosophies and how I, but at least you know where I stand. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving you sugar when you talk to me and then something else the other way. I, I, I'm not, I don't like that. That's why I respect Monty Talkington so much, mm -hmm. Larry Schmaltz so much, my dad, like mm -hmm. what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. you know, Even not you that don't I don't respect with it. the yeah. others, but <laughs> yeah. those are, those are the people that I know very, very well. And Monty, I didn't know at all before council, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I respect that about them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Trish has always been shooting me straight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I appreciate that about her. Now she hasn't been there very long and the other council members haven't been there very long. Bob is a friend of mine. Um, I went to Bible study with Bob. I respect Bob, um, at that level. Like I do, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so like, I do want to, I want to be able to, to lead and facilitate the changes inside the city mm -hmm. for this growth and for the beautification and, and just to make us a unique, cool city in, in what we are. Cause we are unique, mm -hmm. you know, and we're a good community mm -hmm. and, and we do things well. We just don't communicate it very well. Mm -hmm. We don't, our, our museum is, is a treasure, right? Like that is a very nice museum mm -hmm. for this small of a town that has done very well. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the artifacts, the stuff that they wrote to it, the photography contest that they had in there recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was nice. It was very well done. Yeah. You know. The key functions of the mayor, I think, is to provide the vision, to get the council on board with that vision, to support that vision, mm -hmm. to move that vision and constantly hold that there for the council mm -hmm. and the employees to hit at. Because mm -hmm. if we all have the same vision and that's communicated well, mm -hmm. top to bottom, mm -hmm. sideways, then it allows everybody, it empowers everybody to make decisions in line with that vision. Propels right? things forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It propels everything forward. Vision statement, mission statement, all that stuff is mm -hmm. so key in moving things forward because then the employee down here can say, well, this is the vision of the council and the mayor and the city. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is what I should do, you know, mm -hmm. and you can empower employees to do it to that degree. And especially supervisors, department heads that should be integral inside of that and communicating that vision to their employees as well. When I have a bad employee that they're, they're not malicious. It's just, they think they're being a good employee. They think this is what it takes to be a good mm -hmm. employee. And it takes communication and the ability to listen to say, okay, I hear why you think that's a good employee, but this is what I'm looking for over mm -hmm. here, right? This is the vision of this company. This is where we're at. Do you think you can do that? Oh yeah, I think, you know, I think yeah. most people, if they know the target, try to hit it, Yeah. you know, and try to hit it at a high level. I think that the, the mayor needs to be making sure that the ordinances are followed, that they're enforced, that the employees have a good culture, okay? That he's able to make decisions and follow through on those decisions and to instruct and inform the council on what's going on and, and the community, like he, he should be the voice of the council and the voice of the employees mm -hmm. and the ear for the citizens, mm -hmm. right? And the, that, that is what he is trying to facilitate and do. In my opinion, that is what the mayor's role is, is that facilitation of that vision and in that communication aspect of that. And I think that takes, it means that when you, you gotta be unwavering, you gotta be able to make a decision and stick and follow it through, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're wrong to say, I was wrong, sorry. Bad, bad deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll backtrack. 
Um, I did that with the transient um, <laughs> vendor license. Transient vendor license. <laughs> I was like, well, this is what I think it should be. And they're like, yeah, no, it shouldn't be. Oh, okay, well, guess what? We can make it however you want to make it. So tell me how you want this ordinance to be. And we'll write it out and see if we can't get it passed. While respecting you know? all other parties involved. We're trying, yes. to, trying yep. to bring unity and mm-hmm. respecting all parties and what they wanted to see in that ordinance and try to facilitate that, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, we can do that. I just mm-hmm. need to know the information. Right. Right. Yeah. We've kind of lost some of this where the council, I mean, we get, a, we get calls and complaints about ordinances not being followed, about employees. And it's mm-hmm. just like, that's not my role. Yeah. Right, I'm sorry. Hands but are tied. You'd like to see, like, hey, this isn't an ordinance inside of, of Belfouche, like construction sites and how we put dirt around them and how do we encase that so it isn't plugging up our drains and all that stuff. Yeah, we didn't have an ordinance on that. That's something we can do. Yeah. Right? And so the council needs to stay in their lane. I think the mayor needs to stay in his lane. And I think that's important to the streamlining the efficiency of the city mm-hmm. in doing these things. And I just don't think that's been done very well for, for a very long time. You know, I'm not here for the position. Mm-hmm. I'm not here for the power. I'm here to serve, mm-hmm. okay, both the employees mm-hmm. and the citizens mm-hmm. and to be the mediator in between that. It sounds like you're a man of principle, follow through. You care about legacy and preserving Balfouche, and you're a visionary. And I've really enjoyed our time here today and understanding what your vision is for Balfouche. And I'm sure our, our viewers and listeners uh, feel very appreciative of your viewpoints and, and your time here today. Uh, so where can people find more information about your campaign and kind of where you stand with everything? Or you can follow me um, on Facebook at Randy Sowers for Mayor. Uh, that's my Facebook page. Or you can look me up personally and find it there, Randy Sowers. And then also uh, randysowers.com is my website that I have for people to also, like I said, fill out that poll on what they feel needs to be addressed inside the city. So I, if I get elected, I have a working list to address mm-hmm. your issues yeah. and as much as I can, mm-hmm. right? And, and I, I, would, I would really, truly appreciate that. And then, um, and, and also there's going to be content on there if you, on, on different topics. If you want to know what I think, you can always send me a message and I'll try to put something out on it. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Petey. Yes.